Hello everyone and welcome to the 31st Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can work with NS Data and NS Keyed Archivers in Objective-C. So basically, NS Data and NS Keyed Archivers are another way that we can store a piece of data or any objects that we have into a file like we did in the previous tutorial. But unlike the previous tutorial where we were talking about property lists, Basically, property lists only work with a limited number of objects. They only work with things like NS arrays, NS dictionaries, NS strings, etc. Only a few select objects that App allows us to create a property list out of. However, with NS data, we can expand this into our own objects that we want to actually put into a file, and then we want to be able to read back later. So that's the advantage of using NS data and the NS key archivers as well and we'll get talking about that in a bit. But in this tutorial, we're gonna keep it quite simple. Um, we're gonna, everything that we can do in this tutorial, we could basically do in a property list as well, because we're not gonna be talking about how we can use custom objects just yet in NS data, or how we can encode our own objects, but we'll get into that in the next tutorial. What I'm gonna be showing you though, is how we can encode an NS array, and how we can basically put that as an NS data object we can write that to a file, read it back, and then we can basically take whatever we saved as data and we can bring it, bring it back into object form in our program. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial. And uh, again, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how we can encode our own objects and save our own objects into a file as well. So anyway, what we wanna do here is start out with an NS array, because again, that's the object that we're going to be encoding into a file or NS data. So what we wanna do here is NS array and NS array array with objects. And all we wanna do for this, of course, is add a few objects. So let's say we'll add a few strings, Bob, Yoda, and we'll also add an ns number to this. So number, number with int, just throw in 56, doesn't really matter. And so now we have this array that we want to encode into ns data and then write to a file. So what can we do? Well, we want to create an ns data object first off so that we can save this ns data later to a file. But how do we actually encode this data into an actual file. How do we take the array object and make it as a piece of NS data? So what we do for this is we use a class called NS keyed archiver. And there's also another class that we'll talk about in a bit called NS keyed unarchiver, which will take the data back. So basically what NS keyed archiver allows you to do is take any object that we have, put it as NS data or convert it into NS data, and then we can, of course, you know, save the data later on. So the archiver is basically what will put it into data, and the unarchiver is what takes it out of the data, and then you can use it as a normal object. So NSKeyed archiver, the uh, method that we want to use for this is archive, and archive data with root object. And of course, we want to archive the root object, which is called array, because we want to we want to be archiving this object into data, and the object we want to archive is our array. So you might be wondering, well, how does it actually know how to archive, or how does it know how to take this array and put it into a form of NS data, or what is it really doing? Well, how it does this is it actually, all objects that ever are encoded or archived, are they all have to conform to a protocol which is called NS coding. And we're going to be talking more about NS coding protocol in the next tutorial when we talk about how we can encode our custom objects. But NS coding, any object that ever gets archived, has to conform to the NS coding protocol, which basically has two methods in it, which we have to implement. And it just tells the archiver how to save this data, basically, or what we have to save out of this data. So again, any object that you're ever going to archive must conform to the NS coding protocol because that's where we explain how the object gets archived. So pretty simple. Um, so what we know out of this anyway is that NS array does conform to NS coding. So when we say, okay, take this NS key archiver, 
we want to archive this data with the root object array. We take the array, and yes, it knows how to encode itself because it conforms to NS coding. Then the array will take, of course, the objects that are inside of it, and it will take the NS string and the NS number. And since they both know, or they both conform to NS coding as well, they will know how to archive themselves also. So anyway, that's how that works. Um, and if just in case you're wondering how anything's archived, again, they have to conform to NS coding so that they can actually be saved into NS data. So now that we have our array completely into a form of NS data, we can now write this data to a file. So what we want to say is data write to file atomically. So we can take any path that we want. We're just going to use our uh, root directory or the top level of our hard drive. And we're going to say textfile.txt. And this will just make it a readable text file, basically. And we'll see that in just a second. And of course, atomically, we're going to set as yes. So we can go ahead and run this now. And when we do, we can now hop over to a finder, go to our Macintosh hard drive, and you can see on the top level here we have a text file.txt where we saved this NS data object to. So if we double click this, you can see that we basically get this text file with all this random junk in it. We don't actually know, you know, we're kind of looking at this like, okay, what does this mean? And the great thing about it is we don't really have to know what it means because, you know, we just told, uh, we just conformed to NS coding, which, you know, all these objects know how to encode themselves. And so they do, that we don't really have to know how to read NS data, you know, any of this stuff. So that's the great thing about it. As long as we, as long as the objects know how they're archived, because they conform to the NS coding protocol, then, you know, we don't have to worry about reading this. So the NS data is never really supposed to be human readable. It's just a nice way that we can save information or pretty much any information into a file. So now that we have that, we can now figure out how we're going to read this information back into our program. So of course, once we save files, we always want to be able to read them back. That's uh, you know all the reason that we save files in our applications. So what we want to do is be able to take the NS data back out of the file, convert it back into our array, and then print it out. So let's just create a new NS data object. We'll call this data from file. And all we're going to do for this, of course, is create an NS data object with all the contents of that file. So what we want to do is say NS data alloc and in it with contents of file. And of course the file is located at slash text file.txt. And again, that's just where we saved our data previously. So all this is doing is creating a new NS data object with all that data we stored uh, previously in that text file. So now what we want to do is be able to retrieve the NS array that we originally put into that data. So all we want to say is NS array, and we're going to say array from file. And we will just say, okay, now this is the time that we want to unarchive all the data that we put into our NS data object before. So to do this, we're going to use the NS keyed unarchiver class. And this will, again, like I said before, the archiver is used to put an object into data and the NS keyed unarchiver is to take it out of that data. So we're going to use the method unarchive object with data. And again, this is just going to take a data object so we can put in data from file as the object we just created here. And this will take whatever data we had, unarchive it back into an object. So that object will then be, of course, our NS array that we originally put into that file. So now all we want to do is print this out to make sure that we actually, or the array actually was successfully unarchived from that data. So we're just going to print out array from file, and let's make sure this works. So go ahead and run this, and as you can see, we get Bob, Yoda, and 56. So again, this tutorial is just to show you how we can simply use NS data with objects we already know and use archivers to either put them into data or take them out of the data. And we just showed you a great way that we can actually 
save any piece of data that we have and we can retrieve it later from a file. So this is the main way that Coco uses to save data that from any application and we'll be talking about this later in the Coco tutorials as well. But in the next Objective-C tutorial I'll show you how we can custom our we can use our custom objects and we can encode all the data that's inside of them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Many more of the Objective-C and Coco series will be coming up. And this is actually the last tutorial, I think, that we'll be doing in Snow Leopard. So uh, there's no real major changes that we're going to be making, except that we'll be in Lion, so, you know, if it looks a little different or whatever, um, that's why. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this will be the last tutorial in Snow Leopard as we know it. Uh, you know, go get Lion out of the Mac App Store if you, you know, live whatever. But, um, you know, the, the tutorials won't really change if you are using Lion or Snow Leopard, or even Leopard really for that matter. Uh, the Objective-C tutorials are going to stay pretty much the same. The Coco tutorials, we might talk about some Lion things later on, but for now you're probably pretty good. So anyway, that's just a little update just to let you know that we're going to be transitioning to Lion. Okay, and I hope to see you next tutorial. Many more are on the way. You can always check me out on the Google Plus or Twitter page as well. And I'll see you next tutorial.